those of you who get bored super easy and don't really like watching demo videos, it's called Filter Step from Audio Modern. It's 100% free for iPad and also for desktop. Go check it out. Electronic Sounds Audio, the YouTube channel for you. Hey, what's happening, guys? It's Dean from Electrona Sounds. You ever come across a freebie that's so cool and so amazing that you just want to make sure as many people know about it as possible and that all your friends know about it and are using it? It's that kind of day today, friends. We're going to be checking out this new filter step, Creative Motion Filter from Audio Modern. It's completely free for iOS and it's also free for desktop. Let's check this out. I'm a really big fan of the creative plugins from Audio Modern. They also make a creative MIDI sequencer called Riffer. I've done a video on this awesome app as well, and I'm going to put a link to that video up in the corner in case you missed that one. They also make an app called Playbeat, which is a creative groove randomizer app, which is another absolutely super stellar fun must-have app. And I've done a video on Playbeat, and if you missed that one, I'll put a link to that one up in the corner as well. Before we actually start running some audio through this, let's talk about what this actually is. What we're looking at here is we're looking at a representation of a cutoff knob on a filter effect. So what we're doing here is we're basically controlling rhythmically to a grid which is snapped to our host's tempo. We're adjusting the knob of a filter and we're adjusting just how much that knob moves on every step of our beat. We don't have to have changes on every step of the beat. We can have timings over here from down to a 16th note, down to a half note. We can go up to a 64th note for rhythmic changes to how, we're, how fast we're moving that cutoff knob. Let's go ahead and run some audio through this and you'll hear what I'm talking about. For our first example today, I've taken the Pure Acid app from Jim Audio and I've loaded that up into the Om app here on my iPad Pro. I've divided up the output so that I've got the drums from Pure Acid coming on one channel and I've got the 303 sound from Pure Acid coming on a separate channel. I'm going to switch over to direct sound and give you a little bit of idea what you can do using the, if you put the filter step app on something like Pure Acid. my favorite features that comes in the Audio Modern apps is this little icon over here which looks like the infinity symbol and what this is is that if you highlight that so that it turns on the app will literally randomize a brand new pattern every amount of bars that are determined by the number that you've set here so currently I've got this set to the number four so right now filter step will create a random new pattern every four bars it's the equivalent of you hitting the die in the upper or, you know middle here and you can set that number to say one bar so that every bar it comes up with a different you know rhythmic filter pattern you can set that to something like four bars or eight bars so that maybe if you're just live jamming and you're working on some other stuff in the background or playing some synthesizers in real time that filter step is still going to keep moving and generating new random patterns for you in real time as you're doing other things I really like using filter step on melodic content, and that's what we're gonna check out next. Here inside of Beatmaker 3, I've loaded up a preset called the Streetlight Pluck. This is a free preset that comes free in my 6K uh, subscriber pack for, of presets for Beatmaker 3. If you've missed those free presets and you wanna get yourself some new sounds for Beatmaker 3, I'm gonna put a link to that video up in the corner. 
So what I've got here is I've got a pattern that I made uh, in, inside of Beatmaker 3 using the Street Light Pluck preset. I'm going to play that, and then I'm going to put the uh, Filter Step app on this, and we're going to hear exactly what that sounds like. So how would we use something like Filter Step creatively in the actual workflow of creating a finished track inside of an app like Beatmaker 3? One of the things that we can do is once we've set up something that we like as far as a sound design experiment, like here I've got this melodic sound and we've got the Filter Step, uh, you know, filtering that sound. And now I've got the little uh, infinity icon highlighted and I've got it set to change the filter pattern every one bar inside of Beatmaker 3. So it's going to automatically spit out a new series of, you know, rhythmic filter patterns here every one bar inside of Beatmaker 3. What we can do is we can take something like this and we can render out quite a few, you know, bars of it. And then we can import that back into the app as a piece of audio and start chopping that up. Let me show you how to do that. The first thing we need to do is just render the actual piece of audio for us to work with. So I'm going to click over here and get us into song mode. Here's our four bar pattern. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this a few times. So now we've actually got this playing for 16 bars as opposed to four bars. I'm going to go ahead and click on the little three uh, line icon up here to get us into the options uh, menu at the top, which gives us the export feature. And I'm going to go ahead and click on export. I'm now going to click audio export. This is going to get us into our audio export window. I do want to export the song at this time. And if I click song, it knows that my duration of the current song is 16 bars. I want to make sure that I'm exporting this as a wave and that I'm exporting this as 24-bit. That's set by default. I'm going to go ahead and start the export on this now. If export available, and it tells me which directory that's uh, available in. So we're going to go ahead and find that at this time. We'll go uh, to the uh, files directory and in the uh, exports folder. Here we've got uh, a folder called Filter Step 2, which is actually the name of our session here. So it's created a folder in the name of our session to put that export in. And it's given us some sort of a code that it knows, you know. And then here we've got the actual file. But what we've got here is that file is actually... Um, let me go ahead and insert a new bank here. This file, I can go back to the browser so that I can actually grab this wave and I can drag it onto this pad here. Now I can actually see the sample in itself and you can see that it's literally a moving and changing sample that you know goes on for 16 bars and moves and evolves. And now what we can do is using the editor inside of Beatmaker 3, we can go in and we can literally you know start chopping out tiny, tiny little sections of this that sound neat to us. We can explore and get in here with super super fine detail and take as much time as we want to get in here and start separating out the little golden sections we can zoom in all the way right and maybe put the start on a nice zero crossing here and see what we've got go ahead and 
bring this in and create little chops and stuff. Now you can go in and get as detailed on this as possible. Let's say that I'm, you know, super happy with that, you know, little chop right there. I can go into the process menu and I can go ahead and actually not the process menu, but rather I can just hit trim, you know, and get that actual, you know, chop. If I want to make that even smaller, I can, you know, make the window a little bit smaller, hit trim again. And now, you know, I can take away that little clip at the end. I can, you know, bring the... the cursor over here I can choose process I can do a little fade out boom boom you get the drift you could cut out uh, multiple rhythmic sections you could take all of the neat little pieces that you liked from that actual sample you could even um, let's say here you could even go back into the uh, original sample and drag that to a second pad which is now the full sample again you could go into the edit screen you know you could maybe trim that out you know depending on where you're happy with it trim you know and then now we've got two samples you can imagine that if you started filling this up with the chops and the little you know rhythmic variations that you like uh, just you know how deep you can get into the sound design process using something like this you know you can get in here depending on what your source material was it's going to be you know more or less rhythmic and depending on how much time you get in and you know spend in here excuse me trimming out these chops go back into the edit and just hit trim you know It's a really, really uh, interesting way to, you know, now get control over the little sections that you've chosen that were created randomly originally from Filter Step. Here's another example of how you can use something like Filter Beat creatively and how a little goes a long way. This is just a basic empty starting patch on the Axon 2 app from Audio Damage. And it just basically sounds like a little bit of white noise hi-hats. I often use this patch when I'm getting little grooves going inside of Om. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Direct Sound and I'm going to play you this clean. And then I'm going to put the Filter Step app on it and we'll see what difference it makes. We're going to do one more quick example of filter step today using the Ruse Maker Noir drum synth from Brambos. This is a free preset for Ruse Maker Noir called Data Rava, and it's actually from a pack of over 100 free presets that I've put together for the Ruse Maker Noir synth. I'm going to put a link to that video, so if you want to check out some more presets for Ruse Maker Noir, you can get into these. This is the Data Rava preset, and we're going to go ahead and switch over to Direct Sound, and I'll show you what it sounds like when we run it through the filter step app. I think the simplicity in Filter Step is really one of its greatest attributes. You can pretty much just drop this effect on whatever content you want, just start hitting the dice and instantly getting yourself some rhythmic filtering results. You've got a low pass filter, you've got a band pass filter, and you've got a high pass filter. So you can put this on different kinds of content, select different filters, and get different types of results. We can make the uh, trans uh, transition between the steps smoother or more staccato. We can adjust the 
filter range so that these each of these steps is literally moving the filter cutoff knob just a little bit or maybe moving the filter cutoff knob in really wide dramatic amounts. We can adjust the resonance so we have a really screaming filter or a really mellow filter. We can change the timing on this so that we've got up to 64th notes or as low as half uh, half notes. We can adjust this little infinity symbol over here so that it randomizes on its own. And we can even create polyrhythmic sort of patterns by adjusting the brace at the top here. Now we've got a three-step pattern. Now we've got a four-step pattern, five, six-step pattern, etc. So you don't even have to have a full one-bar pattern. You can break it down into polyrhythmic steps. And you can even move this, you know, in real time. Let's say you're using this in a jam or whatnot. You could adjust this. So different sections of the jam, you've got, you know, different sections, uh, rather different step lengths in your filter patterns. If you do find a preset you like, you can use these soft preset buttons at the bottom to store that preset. Maybe you've randomized it a couple more times and you find another preset that you're really happy with. You can go ahead and press that second one. Maybe you've randomized it a few more times and you found another preset that you're like really happy with. You can go ahead and press that third preset. Now, let's say we're jamming and we want to get back to that, you know, first pattern we had. We just press the preset 1. We can go back to preset 2 that we, you know, put in here by pressing 2 or 3 by pressing 3, etc. Filter Step is also free for desktop. Here I've got it inside of Ableton Live on my Mac. I've loaded a few loops up from my Vermilion Sessions Dub Drop sample pack. And I'm going to show you what Filter Step sounds like when we put it on these loops. So how might we actually use the Filter Step plugin in the context of an actual track in something like Ableton Live? Here I've got three different loops that are all being processed by the Filter Step effect. I might record 16 or 32 bars of audio, letting it come up with a few different random patterns. And then I might go through that audio and pick out little tiny sections and chunks or even full bars of that audio that I can repeat and create rhythmic patterns with that do make sense to the track that I'm working on and are not quite so random.